Hi everyone. I want to go over a few things. So I want to go through the instruments here. Let's go to the top of the list here. Uh, this little icon, the little music note, that indicates to the DP user that that is a MIDI track, not a mono audio track or a stereo audio track or an aux track or whatever. Uh, the single little squiggly here indicates that it's a mono audio track and a double squiggly indicates, you guessed it, a stereo audio track. These are, uh, it looks like a little fader, it's just an aux track. It is a track that you cannot record into, but you can route audio instruments, things, uh, into it and out of it. So, go back to the top of the list, the flute. Uh, there's the MIDI track, it was uh, on the contact player, it was the 14th MIDI channel. Uh, that track in the contact player was routed to uh, this says Melodyne, that's all wrong, For, so disregard that. <laughs> uh, but regardless, the contact player, I had it routed to a stereo pair in contact, just like you would in Aria, Aria, Aria. Uh, but I, you would only use one channel of it because it's a mono instrument. Uh, I would typically route that to, say, uh, 3 and 4, 3-4 three in Aria. Uh, in here then, I would choose the third channel of the three and four group that would record that audio of just the flute into this mono audio track. Then, out of that track goes to bus one and two, along with the clarinet and the bassoon. Those are all woodwind instruments and they are all bussed or routed to the same group output. And in this case, I'm using bus one and two because it's first. Uh, the next thing down the list, typically in a score, orchestral score, would be uh, horns. Not horns, but uh, brass. So I've only got two horns here, and they are both routed to bus three and four. Three and four, there you go. Uh, next thing would be percussion, which is harp in this case, and timpani. The harp and timpani are percussion instruments. You will notice that the timpani is routed to our next stereo group, which is five, six. But the harp is not. The harp is routed to a stereo bus. Uh, I chose 29 and 30. Uh, that is what feeds my final mix track, my stereo final mix track. You'll see the input over here. These are inputs. You'll see the input is bus 29 and 30. The output uh, is analog 1 and 2, which is my audio interface for monitoring. Then we have all the strings. And you'll notice uh, these are all routed to bus 7 and 8. Bus 7, 8, bus 7, 8, bus 7, 8, it's violin, the Strad, uh, first violin, second violin, viola, cello, bass. Should be cello. I don't usually use, I don't usually use, say, cello. That's an Italian, probably, Italian thing, probably. Uh, cello, cello, spaghetti, spaghetto. One noodle of spaghetti, I guess, is spaghetto. <laughs> Numerous noodles would be spaghetti. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Anyway, back back to music. Uh, and the string basses are on a separate track. So now back to the bottom here where all of this stuff dumps into a funnel or a couple of funnels or maybe three or four different funnels. And then all they all pour into one big bowl. It's really just plumbing, as they say. So woodwinds one and two. If you look at, we have an aux track here. This is what I refer to as a stereo group. And its input is going to be getting everything that's assigned to bus 1 and 2. The brass is going to get everything that's assigned to 3 and 4. Percussion is going to get anything assigned to 5 and 6. Strings is going to get anything assigned to 7 and 8. Okay, so that's very simple. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, those stereo groups of instruments, musicians, are all going to go out different places. Let's start with the woods. They're gonna go out to a new bus that we haven't used, nine and 10. Percussion is, I'm sorry, brass is gonna go out 11 and 12. Percussion is gonna go out 13 and 14. Strings is gonna go out 15 and 16. Then we have added one, two, three, four. Four more stereo group faders. And those are the faders where our altiverb, reverb, is going to reside. It wouldn't have to be altiverb, it could be any reverb. But in this case, it's altiverb. Our first reverb group is gonna get sound from nine and 10. Well, what is that? 
uh, anything that's putting out sound on 9 and 10. Um, that would be the woods group, okay? So the woodwinds are going to come down here. They're going to go into the woods fader. Out of the woods fader, they're going to go into the wood verb fader. And that's where they're going to pass through reverb because we've got the reverb inserted in that group. Same thing with the brass. Brass 3, 4, it's going to go out 11 and 12. 11 and 12 is going to feed, you guessed it, the brass verb track. There's its input and there's its output. So all these wood verb, brass verb, perk verb, string verb, all those reverb tracks are going to feed the stereo mix track, which its input is 29 and 30. So the output of those four groups has to be 29 and 30. So we've got wood verb, 29 30, brass verb, 29 30, perk verb, 29 30, and string verb, 29 30. I also have a master fader and it is going to 29 and 30. So that is actually, if I move it up or down, that's going to move everybody up and down. Reverb everything. You'll see it's last in line just before the mix. And this, this is just me down here in the microphone. So let me play you a little bit of meditation from Thais here. Okay, um, let's look at the mixer here. Um, so here in the mixer, just like the tracks window that we had open earlier, here's the tracks window. All the instruments are in order. And here is, that's the sequence editor, sorry. Here's the mixer. We start with a the flute, then the clarinet, bassoon, two horns, harp, timpani, strad, first violin, second viola, cello, basses, bass pits. Then we get down here to the masters, uh, woods, brass, perk, strings, and then the reverb of those. Wood verb, brass verb, perk verb, perk verb, say that fast sometimes, and then string verb. Okay, uh, I'm going to narrow this down so we can see more things in one picture. So uh, let's start that again. Listen to the bass right here. String basses. This note coming up right here, how loud it is. kind of overbearing. Um, let's listen to that again. Yeah, it's just really, really loud. So this is uh, in Digital Performer. This is the automation button to record. The little green light indicates that if there is automation in the track, that it's going to manipulate all that information. So anything in the insert points, these aux send knobs, anything you do in this thing, anything you touch, anything you move, is going to duplicate that every time it plays back. So you can see here that I do have automation. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, in fact, let's look at that right now. Let's go to the bass track and look at that and see what it looks like. That's the wrong track. So in fact, we can even see how big it is right here. Now, if we want to see the fader automation of that, we can look at the volume. Okay, and here it is again. So what we really need to do is pull that down. So the wrong way to do that would be to change all this automation like this and start going up here and drawing all this stuff. Okay, that's for the birds. Let's just go back to the mixer and move our fader and just pretend we're directing the orchestra. I'm gonna go back a little bit more, a little farther back. And it's blinking red, which means it's gonna start recording anything we grab right about here. And let's watch where it goes. Okay, it's about a little more than halfway up. So let's do that again and pull it back when we get there. And grab it right now. stop and that takes us out of the recording okay so now let's go back and look at our automation you can see it was pulled way down
Very nice. Okay, so that's fader automation. If we wanted the bases to pan left or right, we could do the same thing. Left, right, back to center, and it'll do that. Left and right, and back to center, just like we just did. Okay, but we don't want that, so we'll just undo that. But you can automate anything. This is, this is not unique to Digital Performer. Practically every DAW on the market does all this stuff, so it's really cool. This is, uh, what is this up here? It's an equalizer. So if we wanted to, we could have uh, left that automation alone. In fact, I'm going to do another undo. Let's see if it puts it back to where it was, where it was loud. We're back to where we were. It's really just too bassy. So really, instead of turning the volume down, we could have come over here. Cause see, I cranked up low end on the basses. Just make them sound nice and fat. Um, but we could automate the bass EQ. So let's let's just turn this down when we get there. That's this gain knob. Okay. So A little late. Let's do that again. Okay, now let's watch it. Now, even though we've lowered the EQ, and we can go see that if we look at the information in the audio track, this is low frequency gain, low mid frequency gain. In here, we're gonna drop it right here. I started a little too soon. So here, let's go back and automate the volume fader because that was indeed too loud. So we'll do that too. But we won't have to do as much of the volume because we already took care of some of it with the EQ. Alright, now let's listen again. much better fix but either one would have done and in fact correcting both of those things helped so um, let's get to the discussion of why do we not put altiverb you'll see four of them up here why don't we just stick those in these four groups and be done with it we could and here is a, a good example let me play I'm gonna mute the violin the solo violin and the harp and we're gonna listen to uh, just um, just the strings here. Okay, you can see I do have some automation there. Let's pretend that I wanted to slow, pull this way down real quickly on that Not on that bass note, let's pick a different spot. This note right here. Uh, let's try that. Let's pull it down on that G flat. And a swell. So now listen to what we just did. Here the reverb is flowing, what I call breathing, completely natural to what we just directed with that fader. That is the fader, the master fader for all the strings, okay? Uh, let's listen one more time. Okay, now let's do this. Let's take the string reverb, okay? 
and let's put it over here, right in the group. Now let's listen to what happens. Aha, so as soon as we yank that fader down, the reverb also got yanked with it. And that's not cool, that's just not natural. Let's listen to how unnatural that sounds again. So what we really want is the reverb to be in a separate track so all of our instruments feed their respective groups. Then those groups feed additional groups that has the reverb in it. Much better. Now let's listen one more time again. Much better. Okay, so let's uh, put that back to where it should be, something like this. I'll just leave it alone. no idea if that's right or not. So let's listen to everything else. Let's turn the harp back on and the violin. Okay, it's wrong. <laughs> okay, but now let's listen to another spot here. Let's listen to these horns right here. Let me mute everything except the horns. I would like to hear more horns there. Let's listen again. Turn my automation on. Right here on that same bass note. That same note that we turned down, I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna crank the bass like crazy. Not the bass, but the brass. but I did it too soon, okay? Okay, so you get the idea of automation. I'm, I'm uh, beating a dead horse here. Uh, but it is absolutely imperative that if you're mixing music, it doesn't matter what kind of music it is, classical, jazz, pop, rap, funk, doesn't matter. You have got to use fader automation. And not just fader automation, but automate everything. So automation is your best friend. Uh, it's like having four other engineers there with two hands that are ready to move every knob exactly, exactly when you want and how much you want. That's uh, automation. Trust your ears. If you hear something too loud, turn it down. Uh, be a nitpicker. Go through the whole piece and listen to just the woodwinds. All these things are instruments flowing into a funnel. What funnel? Funnel number one, two. And then where does that funnel pour into? Uh, it pours into this bucket down here called woods. And then out of that bucket, we pour it into another bucket. And out of that bucket, into another bucket, a stereo bucket, <laughs> the final mix track. And then we end up uh, with a final mix. Hope that was helpful. Until next time.